those of you who are here for the first session, um, we talked about the ways that we stimulate uh, microgravity here on Earth and um, ended with our experiment we took up a microgravity plane and that's where we're going to start this session which shows you how we use the toys up on that plane that you guys are going to make today. Okay, and as you guys probably noticed, I handed you guys a yellow sheet. Just at the end, if you guys would please fill that out and then give it back to me, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. So, I have with me today Dawn Wagner. She's also from Parkside. I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. I teach uh, science at Parkside. Uh, I've been teaching 25 years, but for about the last nine at Parkside. So I was fortunate to come in as they were becoming a NASA Explorer School. So I had many wonderful experiences as part of that. So, um, so what, yeah, so what we're going to, how many of you were here last session? Right, so we're going to kind of start off where we let off last session. And for those of you who were not here last session, um, Ms. Wagner and I both had the fortunate, um, we're fortunate enough to fly um, in NASA's um, microgravity plane. They were commonly known as the Vomit Quant Comet, although they prefer it to be called the Weightless Wonder. And so we took a student experiment up in that. But while when our student, we were done with the student experiment, we had a chance to play um, for a few parabolas with some toys. And so we're going to show you how some of those toys behave in a 2G and a micro environment. And then we're going to allow you to make those toys um, here so that you can see how they um, behave in a 1G environment. So that's kind of the plan. Um, you want to go ahead and... So, we, we, we're going to kind of start with what is microgravity, because some of us have heard of a zero gravity environment or a microgravity environment, and um, it's, it's, some people are kind of confused as to what that is and what that stands for, so we're going to kind of cover that. So this talks about gravity, and the gravity is a force that um, governs the motion of all the objects in the universe. It's what keeps us uh, orbiting around the sun and the uh, moon orbiting around us. And so a lot of people think that there's no gravity above the Earth's atmosphere. So right now we have the space station that's orbiting around the atmosphere, and they think that there's no gravity up there, and that's why the astronauts float. And that's not the case. There actually is gravity up there. It's not as strong as it is here on Earth. And so the next question I usually give my students is, well, then why are they floating? And the answer is they're really not floating. They're falling. They're falling at the same rate that their vehicle's falling at around the Earth as the Earth is keeping them in orbit. So because the space station's falling at the same rate that people inside it are falling, they appear to float, or floating or having that sensation of falling, floating. Um, so this talks about the typical altitude that um, that we're usually at um, when we're orbiting the Earth, um, where we've been in space for the last several years. Um, it's usually between 120 and 136 miles above the surface. The space station sh changes um, its, uh, its altitude a little bit. Um, sometimes that's to avoid space debris and stuff like that. And it's always kind of being pulled down towards Earth, so it's always kind of creeping down a little bit, and then they have to adjust that and bring that back up to a safe orbit. So I don't know. This, this is the PowerPoint slide. So um, what happens is that Parkside, we do NASA uh, family nights at NASA usually, or at school, usually three times a year. Um, this year we only hit two. In the past, one of our family nights, uh, before we went for the microgravity plane, was a toys in space um, event where the parents, uh, parents and the students had a chance to do exactly what you're going to do here today. So we always bring our families together and we, um, First, we do some education, kind of clear up misconceptions and that kind of stuff that the public may have. And we always give our families uh, a handout. If you were here for the first session, you got the one for the egg drop. Now you have the one for the toys in space. Um, this is on the rotation to do this family night at Parkside next year. Um, we kind of go through them. So as you can see, we kind of talk through a little bit about what's going on for the night, talk about our stations, who's presenting when. Then we do a little bit of education on it and talk about how it works. And then if you look on the back, it talks about the two toys that you're going to be making today. Today, we also always have our standards, um, usually the National Science and Math Standards on the back for our parents. Sometimes we have um, the state standards, and those are current, these are currently being transitioned over to Common Core Math Standards and Next Generation Science Standards. Um, 
as far as this activity is concerned for our teachers or soon to be teachers right about that. Um, so uh, this, um, this activity is a good activity because it fits in with the engineering principles for the next generation, science standards for testing now. Um, right, so I'll look through that. Um, so this, this talks about 1G and, and that volume and all that stuff. So we show this, um, so we would be showing this to the parents and the um, students and going in depth and explaining all of it at our, um, our family night. Um, so this talks a little bit about the plane um, that we went on. This, uh, I actually think this, um, this picture was taken from the station. So um, this explains what I explained. So that's, um, the astronauts are following the same rate as the, the shuttle or the station is going around the Earth. Um, they appear to be in this floating state. This is our egg drop. So for those of you who were at the last session when we talked about our egg drop, this is what we dropped the boxes from. And this picture was taken in the spring of 2007. So this was our first egg drop. We talked a little bit about the towers in our first session. Um, the towers are a place where NASA gets um, a chance to try uh, things out in a microgravity environment before they uh, spend the expense to take them off into um, the shuttle or the station. And this is a picture um, of that vacuum chamber that I talked about in the first session. It's a little bit more of an expensive experiment. So once they drop things in the drop tower, which they can do multiple times, then the next step would be to take them to this chamber and do tests in this chamber. And this just gives you a little bit different view than um, I showed you in the first session. And that's inside the tower as well. So that's looking down in that tower. I don't think this works. I think you tried that, you can try it and see. So, an experience that some of you may be familiar with is how many of you have ever ridden a roller coaster? So that, um, that, that, that time where you feel like you're being pulled out of your seat and up off your seat, um, that is similar to um, what we would have felt on the microgravity plane when we went in. Um, it's that same kind of sensation. So that's another way that we simulated that. This is um, the C9, the last time that we just wondered, um, that we took our student experiment and we talked about a lot of time talking about it in the first session, but we don't want to talk about it now. Um, but uh, we took a student experiment up in this, um, which is like the, the final step that NASA, they would do prior to taking something either up on shuttle or to the, to the station or now. And, in modern times now, up on drag or something. So this is um, inside that plane. So now to the toys and space park. These are actual pictures that we took from our experiences up in the back comet. This is Kurt Pe Petronel. Um, Kurt was uh, our mentor that we were assigned to for NASA for our first year we took an experiment up in the plane. And um, he's an uh, uh, engineer with, um, at Mission Control. So he was assigned to us to make sure we were doing everything logistically the way NASA wanted us to do. And after we did all of our test parabolas with our experiment, we got to play. And so this is our play. And actually for us it was playing, but we actually used this information to bring back down to our students to share with them about how these things behave in a microgravity environment. And so he's using a slinky. Um, the guy behind him was our flight surgeon. Um, and then the, the girl behind us, uh, next to him, was not feeling so long that trip was our videographer. It was her first. It was her first time. If you can imagine looking through a video camera on us in this environment, it did. Yeah, it, it's a learning curve for them. She wasn't. She was this is me. This is the picture I thought I had in the last presentation. Um, so what I'm using is we had these toys, and what I'm using is one of those little paddle ball things. And I'm trying to get it to behave in a microgravity environment, which it, of course, did not want to do. This is Glenn. For those of um, you who were in the last night, I talked about Glenn. Glenn is our National Explorer School mascot at Parkside. He has gone on every single trip. He's gone to shuttle launches. He's gone to student symposiums. He's gone to 
conferences with NASA. He's gone. Ross is gone. He should have been here today because this is like the first NASA Explorer School Associate thing he has not attended. But I'm not even sure I know where Glenn is right now. He's not feeling well today. He's not feeling well today. That will go with that story. Um, so he was flying. No, you're good. Um, so we have the DVD. <coughs> So this, um, this we did, these are, uh, I was actually using the toys on that plane. It's actually uh, Mr. Marshall, this is what I said. You're going to make this today. So this is Mr. Marsh using it on the ground, which you guys are going to experience. And this is how that bomb pop is, it, um, behaves in a microgravity environment. Very different. <laughs> Much more challenging. You can see up in the corner at 21, that tells us what parabola we were on. This is a jump rope on Earth. I'm glad they videotaped your jump rope in that game. Then in microgravity. Having some troubles. This is the ball in one G. This is in two G. It just falls like a lead weight. Yes. And this is that same ball in micro G. <laughs> and that was uh, filmed in 2008. So. All right, so um, that gives you a little bit of idea of how that they behave in the um, in a microgravity. For those of you teachers who are interested, we are going to link this video to YouTube so that you can um, play it with your students if you want to like recreate a family network. So what we would like to, so this is, we, we talked like all last hour. And um, so we thought we'd give you a chance to play this hour. And so we're gonna bring our experiment back out so you have a chance to look at that. Um, how we would do this with our students is um, in our classroom or at a family night, is we would give them this paper. And then um, this is a, like a data collection paper. And we would have them first draw um, their design. So draw what their boomerang would look like, which is what you guys are doing today, or draw their ball and cup game. We'd have them draw that design here. And then we would have them make the, um, make the toy and then we would have them answer um, the questions on the back. And then this, that, this is what they would turn into us. So we have extra copies of that up here. If you'd actually, we have plenty of time. We want to leave you plenty of time um, to kind of um, use this stuff and ask us questions um, from either last session or this session. And um, so you can actually walk through this as a student would actually walk through this, um, depending on what your, um, you know, what your level is or where you're at. Or you can just go right into making the toys. Um, so we have tape over here. This is regular scotch tape. We have scissors. We have the cups. We have enough to make 50 ball and cups. So it looks like we're, we're okay there. So and the string for that and the ping pong balls. And um, yeah, and, and here's the double-sided tape that you need. We have the directions here for the ball and cup. We have the directions here for the boomerang. We have the template for the boomerang, and we have the paper plates for the boomerang. So we are going to let you play. So um, you can come down here. You can get the materials you want, and you can actually make these things, and then they're yours to keep. Sarah. Mm -hmm. 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 Mm -hmm